Hello and welcome to Saki Tech. In this C++ tutorial number 14, we will talk about arrays in C++. Now there's no point uh, in wasting your time in an arrays tutorial if you have no idea about C++. Uh, if you have no idea of what's going on, go to my channel and navigate to the C++ programming playlist for the complete series. Uh, otherwise, stick with me and let's tackle arrays. So what is arrays? As with anything in C++, you have to understand the theory first. So arrays are simply a number of elements of the same data type that are ordered in a memory sequentially. Now every element in an array can be individually referenced. Now what does that mean? What that means is we can store 10 values of type integer into an array without having to declare 10 separate integer variables. Now the best way to learn what that means is to do a practical example right away. So let me start by declaring a couple of regular non-array variables. Integer, student, um, id, underscore one. Let's do integer student ID number two. And let's do integer student ID number three. So what happened here was I declared three different variables of type integer for first student, second student, and third student. Now normally there's thousands of students in a given school we're just, doing, we're just doing a small example because I don't want to overload the screen. But obviously this would, this would have been a very wasteful method if we declared 1,000 students. So an array can help here. What you do is, first of all, let me give you the basic syntax of declaring an array. The first thing you do is you put the type, the data type of an array could be integer, could be float, could be boolean, could be a double variable, whatever. Then you do the variable name, okay? And then you do square brackets, and of course you put a semicolon, but inside the square brackets you put the number of elements the array can store, okay? So the data type is anything like the integer, the variable name could be just like these guys, student ID, and then you put in the number of elements within the square brackets, and then you declare your array this way. Okay? Number of elements is how many students, or how many customers, or how many numbers you want. And it could be 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, it's up to you. Okay? You can go as high as your computer memory allows. So let's um, keep this, delete this, actually keep this right here as a comment. I'm going to turn this into a comment and go down and redeclare these three variables as an array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do integer student ID, open the brackets, put in three. So what happened here, uh, here is I have three integer variables that can do the same thing as this without wasting all that space. Now how do I differentiate between student 1 and student 2 in an array? Now here as you can see we have specific names for each student. So this is student 1, this is student 2. With this one what you do is access the arrays using a specific method. So what you do is student ID um, brackets 0 is student 1 student ID 1 is student 2 student ID 2 is student number 3 now the numbers are weird. The first element of an array is always accessed by the index number 
0. The second element is 1, and the third element is 2, and the fourth element is 3, and so on. So here, the number that you put here, this, this, uh, this uh, expression you put here, tells the array how many values it can store. But when you're accessing that, you have to start at 0, then you go 1, then you go 2. As far as this array is concerned here, the one that we declared, this is invalid. Okay, so let me just invalid. This is not going to work. There's nothing here. When we declare this, computer opens up a memory space for student ID 0, student ID 1, and student ID 2, and you still get 3 which equals to the number in here but the way it's accessed is different and the reason I keep repeating this over and over and over is because it is very important basic concept that you have to understand okay now that we're clear on this let me remove these guys okay so what that what we just looked at is how to access um, the values of an array for any given uh, element so far we know how to declare an array which is right here and here's an example and we know how to access each individual element of an array now the next thing is how do we initialize in an array when you declare a variable like this student ID underscore one usually the best practice is to initialize each one of them just like this zero zero okay because when you declare a variable it's it gets assigned a random value that could mess you up later it's always safe to initialize brand new variables to zero and then we can modify them later down in the program so with a with a um with an array what you do is if you have three elements that means you're going to assign three initial values to an array so take off the semicolon and use the assignment operator and then you have to do curly braces 0 0 0 okay so what happened here was student ID 0 got assigned 0 student ID 1 got assigned 0 and student ID 2 got assigned 0 and there's no student ID 3 okay so this is how you initialize an array that has a small size like this. This is the same thing. Let me just show you an example. Let's say we didn't do this. We could have done this. Student ID 0 is 0. Okay. Let me just copy and paste the whole thing. Student ID 1, this is the second student, is 0. Student ID 2 this is the third student this is also zero so this is the same thing as me doing assignment operator curly braces three zeros with commas to follow okay and let's say I want to assign um, initialize all these student IDs to 20 I would do 20 20 20 so all three students got assigned 20 20 20 which is equivalent to me doing this right here alrighty so when it's a small array this is how you initialize an array if it's a big array like 300 or 3000 you're not gonna sit here and do 20 20 20 forever okay what you're gonna do then is you're gonna use loops and I'm gonna show an example in a minute so what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna do one more quick example before I move on to a bigger array so I'm gonna remove all this stuff right here and the first thing I'm gonna declare is an array I'm gonna do an integer array customer ID and let's say we have five customers okay so what I declared here was a an array of type integer that can store five values so what I do is I go down here and I wanna initialize this array 
I want to initialize each customer ID to zero. What I do is, actually I don't go down there. I can initialize it as I'm declaring it. Curly braces, zero, 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 zero. zero. So what happened now was all customer IDs have been initialized to zero. And then let's say I want to, the customer number three actually came in and we assigned them a brand new ID number. What I can do is I can change that value individually without touching any other elements in the array. So what I do is I go to element number two, okay, that is the third customer. Remember, zero, one, two. Number two becomes the third customer. And the third customer got sent customer ID number of 377. Okay? So that is how you individually access an element in an array just like it was a standalone variable. Okay? Very, very, very easy. Okay. Now, let's remove all this. And let's say we were writing a bigger program and we had 500 customers and we need to initialize all the customers to zero in the beginning. <clears throat> in this case, we can use a loop, and we're going to use a for loop. Okay, and if you don't know how the loops work, I want you to go back to my tutorials and go to the loops section to understand how loops work. Otherwise, you're not going to understand what I'm about to do. So with a for loop, I'm going to declare a counter or you know what index assigned to zero semicolon while the index is less than or uh, 500 okay I'm gonna do index plus plus so I have a condition here I initialized a value called index to zero while the index is less than 500 I want to increment the value of the index one by one. So I'm going to go down here. Okay, I'm going to put my curly braces. And inside of the curly braces, I'm going to initialize this array. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Okay, so I'm going to type in customer ID. Okay, inside here, I'm going to put index. I'm going to assign this to zero. So does everybody understand what is happening here? This index is going to reference each element in the array until we reach four, I'm sorry, 500. Okay, so index is zero to begin with. So the first execution is going to be customer ID zero. So the first customer is going to get assigned to the, the value zero. Then the loop is going to loop back to the beginning right here okay and by now the index has increased by one okay this one gets skipped this only runs once in a loop the first time a loop runs this actually happens but the second time a, a loop runs this gets ignored the second time all you that happens is these two run okay so let's go over one more time just from the beginning so index gets assigned to zero Okay, and this is the first time the loop is running. So the customer ID zero, that's the first customer, gets assigned the value zero. Okay, and then the loop goes back. By this time, index has increased by one. Okay, but one is still less than one uh, 500, so the loop runs again. So customer ID one which is the second customer gets assigned the value zero and this happens 500 times because that's the condition of my loop okay so when index becomes 499 the 500th customer gets assigned the value zero right here okay and then when index becomes 500 is 500 less than 500 no so the loop breaks so the customer index 
500 never runs okay but this is how you initialize a big array using a loop so that is all the discussion we're gonna have about arrays I do want to summarize real quick today so the things you can do with arrays is to declare them first and foremost you declare them like any other variable you give it a name you pick a data type and then you tell uh, your program how many elements you're gonna store so in this case we're gonna, we're gonna store 500 elements now to access each individual element in an array you use a reference number for example customer ID 0 is customer 1 okay customer ID 499 is customer 500th customer alrighty so this is how you access each individual element okay now if you have a small array of five people you can declare it by putting in curly braces oops curly braces zero 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 so that is that initialized all five elements of the array to zero if you have a big array of 500 customers or more then you use a loop like this you pick an index number starts at zero while it is less than the total number of customers increase keep increasing the value of index using this this um, plus plus operator okay and I've been I've been over this in my previous tutorials and then 500 customers get initialized to zero to begin now one final thing I'm gonna go over in this tutorial is that you can actually <clears throat> print arrays just like any other variables <clears throat> so let's do it this way let's say customer ID the the tenth customer has a customer ID of 500 and you want to print this to the screen all you do is see out <clears throat> and you type it in exactly as it is ID 9 Okay, and in fact, let's put a new line here and let's save and run this. Save the file, build and run. Okay, so there you go. We printed the 10th customer and the value was 500. And then you can also read the situation, I mean, the, the variable, the same way. So you can go here and type in C out, enter customer. ID for the tenth customer okay and then you put the semicolon and you put in CIN which is to read values from the screen read customer ID 9 remember the even though the index says 9 this is the tenth customer so remove this because we're gonna read it from the screen <clears throat> and then I want to put a new line right here to keep this clean so what we're going to do here is we're going to have somebody enter the user ID we're going to read the user ID I mean the customer ID we're going to print the customer ID okay so file save and build and run the project okay it says enter the customer ID for the tenth customer so let's just do that's the customer ID is 8000 okay and then it prints it right away 8000 so this is how you can um, you can um, do basic input and output on a array. Very easy. You just have to remember the basics. And uh, that brings us to the end of um, the array subject. In the next module, we're gonna actually talk about sending arrays down to functions. We already talked about functions. We know that we can send variables down to functions. We can also send arrays down to functions, and that's what I'm going to talk about in my next tutorial, and uh, that's going to be a little more advanced than what we have been doing so far. But uh, this brings us to the end of this tutorial. Uh, subscribe to my channel for more C++ videos to come, and give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. And thank you for watching again. Um,
Have a good day.